So considering my last video on the subject, I figured that I'd make a follow-up since a bunch of people decided to sub to me via that video. So I thought it'd be best to talk about Channel Awesome's response to the whole situation. Yes, Channel Awesome made a response to the now over 70 page document. So let's talk about how they responded, and it should be known that they don't cover everything in the Not So Awesome document. While I understand why they chose that decision, because it's a long document, it's not a good idea as it can come off as confirmation of that some points they didn't confront were actually true, at least to a public eye. First to point out is that I hold issue when they say fact, because a few of their facts have screenshots but others don't. One except them actually showing evidence would be the Sean Faust accusing Michael Ellis of less than savory conversations. Anything you say can be used to get you ready for some football! I mean, they don't actually refute the point, more or less they confirm that it was true and the screenshot they provided was from the not so awesome document. So thanks for that I guess, it doesn't really prove much. What a twist! Then we got something about how the contributors were talking about payment complaints and how they were being compensated. Channel Awesome responded by saying that Channel Awesome was an aggregator for their content and at no time did CA take a cut from their videos. And there are, is a big issue with this, since according to Mars Girl, her complaint about payment promises was about how Mashad would upload her videos to this Channel Awesome blip channel and that advertisement ad revenue that was made from her videos was going to CA and that she was going to be paid for her videos and what they earned. So that kind of flies in the face of that fact. Gotcha, bitch. Then you've got the document that talks about the drop in traffic to the site and the response was due to the fact that they were getting traction on YouTube and they bring up the example of someone saying that if the views were going, they would have stayed on with the site. Which is all well and good, but that doesn't really address Chicago Crossover's complaint about Mashad saying that it was mid-rolls on Chicago Crossover's that were affecting revenue. So once again, congrats on not addressing that. Next we got Holly Brown's accusations. And all they say is that her accusations are not true. There's no evidence, and while they do provide a screenshot, it barely proves her wrong. Where's that free? No! 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 I mean, at this point, it's all he said, she said. Although, I'd be remiss if I didn't point this out, that the response claims that Holly said that Mike Mashad owns the Nostalgia Critic IP. And I'd like to point out that no, it wasn't just Holly who made that accusation, it was also Obscurus Lupa. Not to mention, she mentions that the majority shareholder of CA was Mike Mashad. And if that were to be true, and taken with what CA said in their statement, that would still mean that he's a majority owner of the Nostalgia Critic IP. At least logically thinking. Then again, with this whole mess, it's once again, he said, she said, with no actual evidence backing up either party in this instant. One thing that I will admit that I have an easier time swallowing is the Lindsay Ellis complaint on the transformation scene into Boldly Flea, where Lindsay Ellis, aka the Nostalgia Chick, complained about the scene in the document. But Channel Awesome did provide a screenshot of the conversation in which has Lindsay saying that she didn't find it to be offensive or creepy. Gotcha, bitch. Now granted, I can't say the screenshot is completely accurate or is true, as there exists the possibility of it being fabricated. However, considering that Lindsay Ellis did think that doing a rap about... Well... So logically, if you're rapping, you're probably not raping at any given time. So here we have my friend and yours from Victor Brian. <laughs> was a good idea, and she later decided to delete that, I'm more than willing to accept that it might be a little more true. Look, I understand that people can change their perspective over time and look back on what they did as less than savory. However, if you said that you didn't mind and even that it wasn't overly offensive, then you can't really hold it against the creators about this if you gave them your consent on the matter. Now, like I said, I don't fully believe either party on this. I'm more than willing to look it over and change my opinion on it. I'd like to see if there was evidence for either side about the situation, to be honest. Then there's also Linkara's account, and that needs to be taken into consideration that they didn't address that either. I mean, then you got people like Allison Preglu who said that no one was happy when the filming was going on. And then she makes a statement like this. I don't know if you want this for behind the scenes thing, but I thought I would uh, just add, you know, that it, it was a great production to be a part of. Uh, it was a lot of fun to be part of this and Suburban Nights. I hope that uh, future projects are in the works and that, you know, all of us get to work together again. Uh, I love being a part of the site, a part of these productions, and it truly is uh, really the, uh, the highlight of this year and last year. You know, getting to spend time with such great people and, and do what I love doing most, and that's entertaining people and creating things. It kind of also raises a red flag. Look, like I said before, 
Yes, it's understandable that people are willing to change their perspective over time. Hindsight is 2020, but at the same time, it raises inconsistencies and should be taken into consideration as well. As far as I know, this situation is a mess. Once again, as I said with my previous video, come with this topic with a skeptical mind. Unless there's hard evidence behind either side, I, I prefer not to take a full side with these issues, and I suggest you guys do the same. Granted, at this point, I think it's a moot thing to bring up. Why? Because as I say this, and type up my script, a number of contributors have left the site, and cut ties with Channel Awesome. If there's anything that can be learned from this, it's to be transparent as possible. And try to, one, admit your faults, or two, properly refute accusations with evidence and not just statements. Testimony is not enough in these situations, and evidence must be given. Especially if your company is based on the internet where you need to quell any sort of misinformation that might be out there as soon as possible. You're making your money on this machine, and if it's against you, then, well, you're pretty much screwed. <laughs> but, alas, what do you guys think? Do you think the channel awesome is sunk? Do you think they can recover? What do you think of all this information? And let me know in the comments below. As usual, I'm your host, Skull Common, and remember to examine your fandom. Us riches beyond your wildest dreams. Something that can make every single person in this room a millionaire. Alrighty, where's that frickin'? It is!